the smartest kid in the class who was like, I'm done, I know the answer. Yeah, you made a mistake up there, Mr. Teacher. Like, that kid, that kid was the last kid to get a job. What's going on, guys? A little bit of Monday motivation. I've never really talked about my experience at Kaboot Camp, only briefly in my video where I talked about what happened after Kaboot Camp and how I got my first job and how I negotiated that first job, but I've never talked about like the ins and outs of the actual Kaboot Camp. So if you don't know, I went to Dev Mountain before it was bought out by Capella Education, so a while back. It was the part-time program. It was three months long, three days a week. Remember we had it on Saturdays for just a few hours a day. But that's all I would, that's, that's all I could afford at the time. I couldn't quit my job to go. I couldn't do the full time, although I did consider it. I tried to figure out how I could budget $500 to make that last for three months. Uh, in addition to paying the tuition, which I think at that time was like $9,500 or something like that. And I couldn't do that. So I decided I would do the just part-time co-boot camp because that's, that, that was my only option. I wanted out from where I was and I knew that I was just gonna have to do whatever it took. So I went to like their free seminar thing and then I signed up. It was a $500 down payment. So I put $500 down and they sent me a JavaScript book and they told me that I had to read a certain amount of chapters before it started, otherwise I would fall behind. And I didn't do it because it didn't make sense. What I did then when I was faced with challenges that I'll talk about and what I would do now three years later into the process. So when I first started the program, I was just driving myself after work a few days a week and then on Saturdays. And then I met someone there at, at like the very first seminar thing. We we're all like just at like the little soda machine, just, just talking. His name was Jeff. And I met Jeff and we decided we wanted to ride share since we didn't live too far apart from each other. And we just rode, we, we rode in the same car. We took turns and we started out with about maybe 35 people and we ended with about five people. <laughs> the first two months were really kind of project intensive, just like you'd see at almost any co boot camp now. Like, here's what we're doing this week and then the next week and the next week. And at that time in 2015, React wasn't as popular as it is right now. So we were learning how to do Angular. But first we had to get started with with everything. I knew nothing about code. I knew nothing. I barely passed the little entrance test that they have. The entrance test that they had was like, reverse this array of words or find the last element in an array or just stuff to me that was like blowing my mind and I didn't understand anything. And I was like asking for help and it was the first time I figured out Stack Overflow was a thing and like just getting into the code bootcamp was just really difficult for me. So it was safe to say I didn't want to have anything to do with that JavaScript book that they sent me to start with. So we started off with the basics. The first day was like GitHub and then we did CSS and then they had like this little dental page for a dentist that we had to recreate. I remember doing that at work when things were slow. People were like, oh, what's that? I was like, I'm making websites. I'm a, I'm a software developer now. And they're like, oh, but you still work here. And I was like, for now. In my head, I'm thinking that. But outside, I'm like, yeah, I know. It's just something I'm, I'm just, I'm really passionate about. So after all that, we did JavaScript, and we did the basics of JavaScript and, you know, prototypes, inheritance, constructors, recursion, closures, stuff that I still have to Google from time to time, just like the fundamentals of JavaScript. And then after that, we started building like these little recreations of small websites. One of them was a Reddit clone, and it was just to modify the DOM with JavaScript, just doing upvotes and downvotes. We did another thing to, you know, check for validations with JavaScript. We did like a little Twitter clone, where we had to change the color red. Like if you, you know, on Twitter, there's only so many characters you can type. We had to change the characters to red if you went over the, the character limit. Just things like that. Just little tiny things that were supposed to be preparing us for job interviews. I was having trouble with that. And I remember most of the time I'd be looking on with Jeff and he would know exactly what to do because he had experience with it. And I started to question if I made the right decision to go to Co boot camp because there were a lot of days, especially in the mornings, when we would get like a code test and I would have no idea how to solve it. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have an idea of what the code problem, like one of them was make a palindrome. I had to Google what that was 
maybe my vocabulary is just bad and I'm just a lot of the code problems I didn't even know what they meant like it's like when you read a word problem in math class and you have to reread it 10 times you're still not sure what it means that's what I felt about almost every warm-up code problem I would just sit there and I would just like put my head on the desk and I would just be like why am I doing this and one time I tried to get my money back but I was like 75% of the way through and it was prorated I already gave him $500 I couldn't get back and the other 4000 out of my pocket that I paid them they were gonna give me like $300 back or something and I was like you know what I, at least I can do is just like show up it's it's time when I wouldn't be working at my main job anyways and it's not like I wasn't trying I was trying but when you see everyone else around you getting it really quick it's really demotivating it was for me to compare like not to compare myself to other people just compare myself to myself and try to improve on what I'm doing every single day not try to match this guy over there I don't know that dude's history I don't know his background I don't know his skill set at all but you still try to like compete I think that's just like a human nature is to just you know want to match what other people are doing it's your job it's your life it's your decision to do this he's doing it for a different reason he has a different background you don't even know him you don't talk to him he just looks like he just looks like he has the answer done maybe he doesn't even have the answer done maybe he's struggling but he just doesn't look like it. Like, I wouldn't know, but I, I had a really difficult time comparing myself to other people in Kobu camp because I was like the last kid to finish in, in everything. And everything that I did at the Kobu camp was just, why am I doing this? This is not for me. I like tech a whole lot, but for whatever reason, programming just, I, I thought it wasn't for me at that point. I felt like I was a sponge that was already, you know, saturated, couldn't absorb anymore. Um, and then occasionally I'd absorb a little bit more and a little bit more. And so maybe I was getting like 10. 20% of the knowledge of each session at home. I wasn't very self-disciplined. I didn't go home and finish the little code stuff. I went home and rewarded myself with, you know, congratulations, you went to class and you stayed the entire time, didn't leave early. Now play Overwatch the whole weekend until the next class. But right before class, you're going to spend two hours and, and finish what you didn't, you know, what you didn't complete. I would try to do it three days later and I wouldn't remember anything. I'd have no idea what I was doing. So don't make that mistake. As much as you feel like, I don't know, burnt out or like you're so tired of doing this, you have to do it. You have to go home and you have to do it because if you don't keep doing it, you're going to get behind and you're going to forget. It's, it's the consistency just day to day, no zero days. Just type a little bit of code every day of whatever you were last learning so that you can remember it. So anything worthwhile usually takes time. I know it can be boring sometimes, but it's not that it's not that it's boring that it's the issue, it's the it's our relationship to boredom that that's the issue. We need to make the work the reward, not like, oh, now this thing is functioning and and that's it. Like, no, the work of like figuring it out and like realizing that you're stuck and that this is like, hmm, interesting, rather than, oh, this sucks. I'm never going to figure this out. You need to make it like, hmm, I've tried this and I've tried this and I've tried this. No, but like that, it needs to be fun. It needs to be a fun process for you. But we're kind of conditioned to look for a distraction that's new and novel and fun when things start to not become fun anymore. And getting over the boredom and just doing the work anyways when you're not necessarily like having this huge emotional excitement about it doesn't mean that it can't be rewarding. Uh, I struggled with that a lot and I still kind of struggle with that. When things get boring, I want to take a step back and I want to take a break and I maybe I tell myself that oh you're just burnt out or something that's that's not it it's like I'm just being impatient with the process it's a signal to me to slow down invest in the details learn the little things make the process the reward rather than like getting that end application work yeah that's it that's a great moment to have but that shouldn't be like your reason why you do it you do it because you enjoy the process not because you enjoy like the app. It's good to have goals and visions, so don't get me wrong there. But there's a lot more time spent in the process than when you press the on button to the application. So Ruben asked me a couple questions. He wanted to know, what did I do when I felt stuck? Well, I'll tell you what I did when I felt stuck. Um, I don't, don't do this, but this is what I did. I would, I would make an attempt for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I would tell myself that, I'm a, that I made a good faith attempt at attempting to get around it, and then I would just give up. That's, that's actually what it came down to, is I just gave up, but I told myself I couldn't figure it out, but I will later. 
The biggest challenge for me, as I was talking about earlier, was not comparing myself to other people, especially, especially because the guy that I, that I ride shared with, Jeff, was so smart and I sat next to him and we were like friends, right? And he would get the problem right away and I would, I'd want to ask for help right away, but I have to, I had to practice not asking for help every two seconds. And I got into this bad habit where I just asked for help, like right when I knew that I wouldn't understand something, before I even took a moment to think it through, I'd just be like, I got a question. I, and then as time went on, I learned to, you know, just, just pseudocode it out, just write everything out in plain English. All right, well, if I want to look at each item in a list, I probably need to write a loop. So I'd write down stuff like that, like in, in plain English of what I needed to do. And then if I got stuck with syntax or something, then I would ask for help. It was really difficult not to feel demotivated when I sat next to Jeff and he would just get everything right away. Or I'd look over at his laptop and he would be like halfway done with the project for the night or he'd be like finishing early. And I'm over here just like barely on line one. And so not only was it like not just some kid in a class, it was like my friend. And that was just like, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this, you know, isn't what am I doing? I gotta get my money back. Uh, I, I made a mistake. I'm wasting my time. If you guys want to know something is that the smartest kid in the class was the last kid to find a job. Jeff got a job uh, before me a few weeks after. I got a job maybe like a month after the very... You can go watch my other video on that if you want. The smartest kid in the class who was like, I'm done. I know the answer. Yeah, you made a mistake up there, Mr. Teacher. Like, that kid? That kid was the last kid to get a job. Yeah, he was really good at code and he solved everything and had like no issues with it, but he couldn't handle rejection. He couldn't handle the struggle of being told no and he couldn't communicate his logic. He could only stick in his head. He didn't know how to operate like on a, like on a work level, like on a, a working functional level. He was the kid who got to present his project to the class and I, I wanted to present really, really badly um, because I was proud of the crappy application that I made, which was like searching Spotify. He had something like way more complicated built. I'm over here like, there's no way I'm gonna get a job. Like I just, I just spent three months here and the last month wasn't even learning anything. It was just personal projects. When I finished the Kobu camp, that's when it really set in that was like, look, this is on me. And I started to have like this inner conversation about like, look, man, you, you, you still have access to all these tools. You know the knowledge. Maybe not all of it's not clicking to you right now and you wouldn't know how to apply it, but you know it. So make it work. But if you're looking for some inner motivation or some Monday motivation, just want you to know that if you feel like you're overwhelmed or that you made a mistake or that this isn't for you, I was there too, okay? Like I know, I know what that's like. I know what it's like uh, when you compare yourself to everyone else. You're not getting it and everyone else is. Don't worry about that. Just keep, just keep showing up, keep pushing. Put in hours when you're off. Don't reward yourself with ridiculous amounts of recreational activities. Stay consistent, put in the work. If you take a, if you take a break, you're not gonna remember what you're doing. I've been there. You're gonna hit that wall, you're gonna hit another wall, and you're gonna hit another wall. I hit walls all the time, but they're not walls to me anymore. They're just obstacles that I move around. I don't see it as like the Game of Thrones, just like ice wall meant to keep you away from doing this as a profession. It's more of just like, one of those Olympic athlete obstacles. It's just part of, it's part of the game now. It's part of the training. So I'm just used to it. Um, but when you're just this little peon, when you first start learning, you just, everything looks like that huge wall. But they're not, you can actually jump over them. You just gotta train, get stronger. You got this. I didn't think that I could do it. And here I am. Now I have a channel talking about it. And I knew that I wasn't the only one. That's why I started this channel. I know there's still people out there trying to make that change, trying to and improve their quality of life, their family's quality of life, you know, make more money, be able to provide more, have a more stable life, more secure, do something they're passionate about. If you've ever wanted to figure out what your purpose in life is or what you really do want to do, find something you absolutely hate. That is the quickest way to figure out what you want to do. Once you become comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, that's when you start making the progress. Put yourself into uncomfortable positions. You have to you have to stress the body to get better. So Anyways guys, I'll catch you in the next one.